Hello and welcome to Budapest. We're here at the Hungaro Ring for the fourth round of the International GT Open. It's been a fantastic season's racing so far. Let's take a look back at all the highlights from the first three rounds. Season burst into life at the Nürburgring, where the weekend was dominated by the Corvettes with Maxime Soule and Katzberg, Pastorelli, and Nico Ramos sharing the spoils. As ever, there was a start of year atmosphere, some brilliant racing throughout the pack. The Corvettes were not to be headed. They were at the top of the standings, heading on to round two. In Portimao, the results were much the same, but the action was very competitive. Rise at Tatumli making the switch across to partner Maxime Soule in the SRT Corvette. A potent driver pairing was formed and they scored victory in race one following that move late on. Race two and the Corvettes shared the front row as Maxime Soule made the early running. Sports new Mercedes was an early spinner. It looked as if Daniel Zampieri, Roman Vlanov would score the win until that puncture promoted Ramos and Pastorelli to the head of the field. The fight for second was cited by that spin, which forced Tumlu wide and promoted Montermini. It's around three in Jerez, and this time it was all about the Ferraris. There's one going in favour of Roman Mavlanov and Daniel Zampieri. So the Nissan made a very welcome debut in the series. Porsche's enjoying the tight mid-speed corners around the Andalusian circuit even if Albaro Barber did overstep the mark ever so slightly. Disappointment for Diedrich Shitov, Nash Hamilton after Shitov's rear wheel detached, pitching him into retirement. So the first win of the season for Mavlanov and Zampieri, and disappointment caught him out behind them. Race two was an absolute thriller. Although the early exchanges were somewhat attritional, Stefano Constantini heavy thump into the tyre wall, Giorgio Roda doing much the same in avoidance. Nicolo Shira was flying in the Vlorba course Ferrari in the early stages. It was Roman Mavlano as he attempted to move clear to Tia Patel. After mid-race pit stops, Andrea Montermini, the reigning champion, assumed control of the Vlorba course Ferrari and charged up through the field. Gustav Malev has been away his chances. Montermini chased down something like a 35 second deficit to eventually move all those in front and score his first win of the season for Tempelli and Dolby and GTS Honours. Here we go then for a lap of the track. Our pilot this time around is Michele Rugolo in the AF Course Ferrari. So a very steep downhill braking zone into Turn 1. Fight the apex. Just has a little bit of a correction before the very quick sprint on downhill. Into the left-hander. Good overtaking opportunity, opportunity as well to make places in the opening couple of laps. Comes out of turn two and then downhill into the right hand flick of turn three. Very quick corner. The road then bottoms out before beginning to climb up the other side of this natural bowl in which the Hungara ring is situated. With a very quick left hander, be careful not to take too much of a bite out of the curbs. As you can see, the direction changes coming very rapidly. This a track tiring for the drivers and machinery alike. So through the first of the chicanes, ride the kerb through the right-hander, stay well off it for the left-hander because you want to then get the good exit. Sprint into the left-hand kink, again just riding the kerb. Kelly Ruggolo really on it on this lap. Then one of the longer straights and faster sections of the circuit beginning to just climb back towards the pit paddock complex. Again, this right hander, a good overtaking opportunity on the brakes. It's a 90 degree radius corner. And on towards the left hand hairpin at turn 15. Again, the exit speed is absolutely crucial because we're climbing all the time for the last corner on this almost four kilometer long Angaro ring circuit around the right hander and then accelerating along the one kilometer start and finish straight. So that's a lap the circuit with Michele Rugolo. Roman 
Lana of led away from pole position as the pack surged down to the first corner at the start of race one. In a daring move from Andrea Montermini, who jinked to the inside. The reigning champion showing all of his years of experience to take the early advantage. Lana still at wide. Starting in the back of the grid, Archie Hamilton had a brilliant first lap, moving clear of Mario for the shooters. The racing Mercedes. Navarro Barber and that Lana engaged in a great scrap early on. Eventually, though, Barber slid the through, and that put him into third, not in pursuit of Paolo Roberti. The mid race pit stops, as ever, turned things on their head. Michele Ruggolo, Lee, charging in the air for Ferrari. Deidre Shitov had a slightly more trying time, trying to stay level with Nicolo Shiro. The Dutchman lost the rear of the Corvette and spun down the pack. Shiro was an absolute charge as he looked to try and get on to terms with the third place battle headed by Nicolo Piscarelli. Francesco Castellacci was also right on the limit in his air course Ferrari. Sule tried and tried again to move clear of Daniel Zampieri. Most the Belgian driver slipping through. Castellacci's day went from bad to worse, tagging Jose Perez Icar. Kelly Ruggolo involved in the spin. Dietrich Shetoff and Duncan Cameron getting away with a very lucky escape after that airborne moment for the Corvette. Out front though, Alan Sickart in the Ombra Ferrari was chased by Giorgio Roda. Roda could not find a way through, so it was triumph for Alvaro Barba and Alan Sickart, Giorgio Roda and Paolo Ruberti. Nicky Pastrelli withstanding all the pressure and Daniel Zampieri to take third in the Super GT win. So delighted Sickart and Barba on the top step of the rostrum. A very bad qualification. The strategy was to recover, so I think it was a good start. Then I was kept behind the yellow car, the other Corvette was not possible to overtake, so the strategy was to be really close and then to change on, on the pit stop. We had an advantage of five seconds to overtake him. It was a little bit due to our entire strategy, uh, but we were hoping to have a, the best result tomorrow instead of today. But. Uh, turned out to be a really good strategy uh, for today and hopefully for tomorrow as well. My first race this year is in GT Open and uh, to win in the first year so it's fantastic for me I think, uh, for, for Alan and uh, also because it's uh, very important for him uh, to, to fight the championship. It was difficult because I have a little bit under seat in the 20 the corners and, and I saw uh, Roda that uh, more and more uh, was uh, catching me and finally I can take the distance and, and win the, the race that it's important for the championship. So race two, Sonicky Pastrelli leading away from Poles Heat. Led the pack down towards turn one. Daniel Zampieri, though, looking to challenge to the outside, and Zampieri able to sneak through ahead of Pastrelli. So, also making a good start was Daniel Kiervitz and Jose Perez Icart. Zampieri making good his escape in the early stages as those behind jostled for position. Francesco Castellacci, in particular, looking to move up through the order as he darted to the inside of Thomas Jaeger. A pair of them making contact then through turn two. It brought Kenny Ruggolo into the scrap. While Perez Icart, head of the GCS class, determined to make progress, so he snuck to the inside of Maxime Sule into turn one and then elbowed his way past to seal the move for turn two. Nicolo Shiro, hot pursuit, also looking to squeeze past. Out front, Daniel Zampieri and Nicky Pastrelli flying in formation as Ruggolo and Jaeger did battle. Eventually, that came to a head into turn three. Ruggolo going for a gap that suddenly closed and saw the Lenny Mercedes off into the tyre wall. Meanwhile, Ferraris after the pit stop were busy jostling for position. Andrea Monturbini looking to slide his way up through the pack. Navarro Barber, race one winner, also looking to follow through. Roberti made life difficult for Monturbini, but it's forced Monturbini able to get past him and then Roman Mavlano. Navarro Barber also to the fore in the GTS class as he was dicing with Roberti. Late on in the race, Isaac Tumlu in the lead, and then Miguel Ramos reeling in the Celestat Racing Team Corvette to snatch the advantage and score a dramatic third victory of the season. 
Ramos always goes well at the Humber Aero Ring. It's his second triumph in two visits in the International GT Open. And this one particularly dramatic. So he and Pastorelli take the victory and move ahead of the championship standings. So Tumlu and Sule runners up, and Turley and Shiro completing the rostrum, with Maliev and Perez Eichhardt victorious in GTS. Perfect result. Uh, it was even better than we expected. With the penalty seconds, we expected maybe a podium, but we had a good first stint and a just fantastic second stint for Miguel, and couldn't be better than this. It was really nice. Uh, I had the goal to overtake them. Uh, I think everything went perfect. I don't remember a, a race like this. <laughs> Years ago, it was tough. I was trying to the others not to overtake me, and this year was different. I was overtaking, so it was even greater. <laughs> I haven't seen the standings yet, but it should be good. Uh, so we are uh, for Silverstone. We will be uh, we will be confident. I think that the, the race was okay. I made uh, an error. That's what we have to to learn for the next races. And this is sport. But there's uh, I was nervous, so it's normal. And as I'm still still an, an amateur, I will I will be learning for the next races. What a great weekend of racing in the International GT Open here in Hungary. The championship couldn't be tighter at the mid-season. Join us in a couple of weeks' time with all the action from Silverstone. <laughs>